Hey, this is Jane Douglas for GameSpot UK. We're here with Nathan Camarillo, executive producer for Crisis 2. Hey, Nathan, how's it going? Good, good. Uh, it's exciting to be here today. We're almost finished with Crisis 2. We can't wait for everybody to get their hands on it and play it themselves, and uh, we're really looking forward to uh, letting everyone play it in March. How's the development process been? Because you've got uh, Crytek Frankfurt and Crytek UK. What's the uh, split been on the work? Yeah, it's uh, it's really great because uh, it, Crytek UK is a great studio, and and in Frankfurt, uh, you know, there's an awesome group of people working there as well. That's uh, Crytek's headquarters. Uh, the multiplayer game is being made in Crytek UK, so it's a very pedigreed studio. Um, they have a lot of guys going back uh, with a lot of multiplayer console experience, and uh, we're really fortunate to have them be a part of the team, and they're making really great nano suit multiplayer for, for Crisis 2. Uh, in Frankfurt, the core R&D team is there that makes CryEngine 3, as well as the single player team. So it's a multi-site, multi-studio endeavor, and uh, a lot of it's coming together, and it's just going to be an awesome time for everyone when they play it. Um, can we talk about the enemies, uh, how they differ from the first game? They're kind of like armored alien types. Yeah, so in Crisis 2, um, you know, one of the big things for us was really challenging the, the nano suit by making the aliens as mobile as you are and using the space in the same way that you do so you can anticipate and also learn routes throughout the space. And so we had to make um, aliens that were intelligent enough to find their way through the environment and as part of that, you know, they needed to be bipedal as well. They needed to touch the ground and be able to jump off of walls and slide down the side of buildings and get into the combat space. So um, it, they challenge you at all points in time and, and it really forces you to change your tactics on the fly. We have these areas at the beginning of, of um, play spaces where you can kind of plan and catch your breath and, you know, maybe go invisible and see every opportunity that's out there. And then from there, when you jump into the action, uh, that plan sort of goes out the window. Um, because it's very dynamic, but you react, you know, based on how they react to the actions that you've taken. We have uh, nano suit modules that you can customize in real time, much like your weapon. So it, with your weapon, you can put different scopes, different uh, grenade launcher, you know, shotgun, whatever, silencer on your weapon. You change these out. We want to take the same approach with the nano suit in Crisis 2. So you have different modules that you can equip. And one, as an example, might be uh, like air combat, where you can uh, have a vertical height advantage in the play space, and you see an enemy below you, and you jump and then you just smash the ground and smash them as well and you know just land right on top of them and pummel them into the ground that's something that's not available to you by default but as a choice you might be giving up a perk that um, a module that gives you like a little bit more air time like it lets you glide a little bit further to make a longer jump so you have to make a decision do I want to smash people or do I want to jump a little bit further and it's the same single player or multiplayer the way that you equip these modules and load out your nano suit essentially changes the way that you can uh, approach, approach the gameplay space, whether it's a 2D um, sandbox, or not 2D sandbox, a, a single player sandbox, mm -hmm. or a multiplayer map. And the multiplayer map becomes a multiplayer sandbox in that regard because you have all of the suit mobility that you have in single player with ledge grabs and sliding and sliding and shooting and uh, you know all these modules as well as uh, being able to car kick in multiplayer and set booby traps and, and everything so I mean it's a, quite a, a deep amount of gameplay. I thought it was really interesting the way you talk about the, the 3D in the game to avoid eye strain it's um, I don't know how you describe it. it's inside the TV like a window rather than popping out at you. Yeah it, we call it a concave 3D experience because it starts at your TV screen and goes into the world and is a deep 3D experience where we can offer a lot of depth but it, we don't throw things out of the TV at you when you pull things out of the TV that causes you to, to focus your eyes closer than what you're what you've been viewing uh, which is the where the TV set is and then that causes eye strain over time and and you know if you're playing hours and hours of multiplayer or hours of single player we want you to be able to play that in 3d and enjoy it without having a headache or eye strain or anything so you know we've done a lot of research in this area over the last couple of years and found that by setting it at the TV and then beyond being having your TV be the window into the crisis world that you can play for hours and experience 3D and it's very gratifying and you just don't get tired from it and that's that's awesome. Okay, um, Crisis is not traditionally known as an easy game. How are you pitching the difficulty of, of Crisis 2? Uh, so it's challenging in, in all regards, you know, depending on what difficulty you choose to try it at. Um, you know, our, our hope is over time, if you start at an easier difficulty, you'll learn the gameplay mechanics and learn how powerful the nano suit is, and you kind of graduate to higher levels of difficulty. And through things like uh, the attachments and the nano suit modules, you'll go back and replay with those. And then maybe a harder difficulty is now easier because you have extra tools at your disposal and you've learned more game mechanics and more ways to set booby traps. But if you go to our hardest difficulty level, like Super Soldier, and play against humans, they're going to pose you a significant challenge. And it's a, it's a completely different game than when you played it on the, on the easy level. So, uh, you know, I think everyone will appreciate it no matter what difficulty level they play at. Okay, cool. Uh, thanks for talking to us, Nathan. No and uh, give us again uh, the platforms and when the game is out, please. 
Uh, yeah, it's coming out in March 22nd in North America, March 25th in Europe on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC.